Welcome to Finding Holiness, where we delve into timeless Torah wisdom, revealing the sacred in everyday moments. Join us on a journey to elevate your spirituality and discover holiness in every aspect of life. I'm your host, Rabbi David Kadosh, and together, let's embark on a path of spiritual exploration. I hope you enjoy this next episode. Hello, everybody. we got a few minutes. It is Thursday. Um, it's Thursday on our way down towards a shorter day shortest day, which means Thursday is the less, least amount of time to speak uh, before we have to start Arvit. But let's go on. Hilchot Lashon Hara. Afilu imhu ro'e she imhu yargil atzmo b'amida azot she lo lesaper la'olam b'gnuto shel Yisrael even if he foresees that if he accustoms to himself to speaking Lashon Hara um, sorry, even if he foresees that if he, that if he accustoms himself to this, Israel of never speaking negatively about a Jew, or from similar forbidden speech, he will suffer a heavy loss in his livelihood. He still has to refrain from doing so. So if you can foresee that this mitzvah is going to cost you business because you're not going to speak Lashon Hara. That doesn't mean that you could speak Lashon Hara. That doesn't give you an excuse. Kegon, shehu tachat reshu tacherim. Let's say you are subject to the authority of people who employ you. Vehem anashim she'en bahem re'ach Torah. And these people really have no smell of Torah, literally. They have no trace of Torah observance, your employers. It's very well known. These people are very neglectful when it comes to the sin of Lashonara. To the extent that if they see someone who isn't as wide open to use his mouth and engage in Lashonara, they consider him a fool, they consider him dimwitted. They're going to remove him from his position. Get out, I'm going to demote you. And that will leave him with no means of supporting his family. Nevertheless, Asur, you cannot speak Lashon Hara. As in the case of all prohibitions, where a person has to forfeit everything he has, rather than violate them. As it's written in, um, in your idea. Um, the, the question is, what is, does this involve also listening to Lashonara? Okay, so speaking Lashonara is one thing. Let's look at the scenario, and then we'll read the notes here for listening. So scenario for speaking would be as follows. Someone who works as a hairdresser, ah, okay, is certain, okay, uh, that she can restrain herself from actively speaking Lashon Hara to her clients, but she cannot avoid passively listening to her clients' conversations of Lashon Hara, and perhaps accepting the derogatory remarks about others. The poskim differ as to whether she would be obligated to give up her livelihood to avoid listening to and accepting Lashon Hara. So the note here says, must, again, must one forfeit his job if he works in an environment where he's often forced to listen, listen to Lashon Hara? The lacha is that if one is confident that he will not accept Lashon Hara and that he will not be pleased to even hear the Lashon Hara, then he is not obligated to forfeit his livelihood. There is a question, however, whether one must forfeit his job if he feels that he will come to accept the Lashon Hara that he is constantly exposed to in his place of work. Some assert that this matter is contingent on the varying opinions as to whether one is required to forfeit all of his money to avoid a passive violation. For example, failing to pay a hired worker in a timely fashion. Since listening to and accepting Lashon Hara is a passive act, the Lacha turns on this disagreement. Many commentators, however, distinguish between a case where the prohibition happens automatically, 
such as failing to pay an employee, and accepting Lashon Hara, where the listener's acceptance of Lashon Hara triggers a transgression. In this latter case, he's obligated to forfeit all his money according to all opinions. Yes? So if you, I know that if uh, someone does something bad, all I have to do is go, oh, you know what, I'm not sure about that. That's enough for me not to be a listener. Yes. One. But what about if I just think in my mind, no, I don't accept that. Just saying that to myself. That that, that's not, yeah, it's called not that's accepting. It yeah, but it no, counts. No speech. Just it counts as not accepting. It counts as not accepting. Yes. Unless, unless, I think he's going to talk about this, if people are looking for a reaction from you and you fail to give the reaction, and, and your, or your reaction will imply a, uh, a negative or whatever if you then you might then it might be uh, it might be a problem yes I think he's going to go on and talk about that um, but we're going to have to wait till next week because uh, our time is done okay we'll see you next week